Hey everybody, it's Joe Jonas hanging with Jag. Hi, this is Carly Rae Jepsen, and you're listening to Jag. Ryan Seacrest with Jag. It's B.O.B. So much swag with my homie Jag. And now, a look at this week in podcasting news. It's the Jag Show Podcast. Welcome in, I am John Jag Gay. The last 18 months has taught us all how to use Zoom. Now, it's great if you need to do a face-to-face meeting with someone who's not great with technology because most of us have learned how to use it by now. Up until recently, though, I told my podcast clients to avoid Zoom. It can be glitchy over a bad internet connection, causing you to lose words, phrases, parts of words. And if two people talk at the same time, it can be a nightmare. You'll never hear both of them. Now, while those things are still technically true, Zoom has addressed its biggest audio issue, in my opinion, which is the fact that it only records part of the frequencies in the human voice. Now, previously, Zoom had figured out which frequencies in the human voice we need to hear in order to understand what somebody's saying. And then to save data and bandwidth, it chopped out everything else, a lot of the high-end stuff, a lot of the low-end frequencies, which results in that classic uh, hollow, not full Zoom sound that you hear on Zoom calls, or if a TV or radio or podcast host is over Zoom, you can almost always tell. Now, recently, though, Zoom added a setting on their app called Enable Original Sound. With the advent of podcasting, Zoom realized they needed an option to make people sound like, well, people. So it's not quite as good as the other apps or an in-person recording. But if you have a decent microphone and a decent internet connection, it's actually pretty close. I've got a link in today's show notes on how to enable original sound in your Zoom app, desktop or mobile, if you want to check it out. Just be sure you've got a decent microphone, a decent internet connection, turn on that setting, and your Zoom recordings will sound better. Other platforms that are designed for podcasts like Squadcast, Riverside, Zencaster, there are still better options. And what they do is they record on your local machine so that internet buffering doesn't affect the recording. And if you wear headphones, there's no issue if two people speak over each other. Both will come out in the final recording on separate tracks. But if you have a hard-to-get guest, or someone who isn't too likely to learn a new program, someone who's not very technically savvy, you can make Zoom sound better with these changes. Okay, on to this week's quick hits of podcasting news. Amazon has bought Art19, which is a podcast hosting and ad sales company. Be on the lookout for Amazon to continue their push into podcasting both in the second half of 2021 and into 2022. Apple and Spotify are still the big dogs in the space, but it probably wouldn't hurt to add your show to Amazon Music so you're available on their devices. It's free. You can do it at podcasters.amazon.com. Again, the website is podcasters.amazon.com, also linked in today's show notes. Commercial Radio Australia's head of digital, he thinks that in the future, half of all podcast consumption will be these quick little three-minute episodes. It is a good reminder that shorter shows are better than longer shows. When in doubt, go shorter, not longer. Uh, That's from Pod News, and the article is linked in today's show notes. I mentioned last week that I've moved my podcast listening from Apple to Spotify. I don't see myself going back anytime soon. But if you are Apple loyal and you want to try to navigate the new Apple podcast interface, there's a guide from Lifehacker that may help, and it's linked in today's show notes. American radio company Odyssey, formerly Entercom, and CBS Radio before that, continues to shift resources from traditional radio to digital and podcasting. Because they own many of the biggest sports stations in the country and have a partnership already with Major League Baseball, they're launching 2400 Sports, which is a sports podcasting operation. Odyssey also bringing in Crooked Media's Love It or Leave It podcast with former Obama speechwriter John Lovett to its Channel Q. Channel Q is a digital LGBTQ plus station that's also uh, broadcast over the air on 32 radio stations in various media markets that Odyssey has properties in. Sadly, while Odyssey does all of this, they are expected to replace more local music DJs with national shows. So more of the same, sadly, for hardworking, underappreciated radio folk. Quick programming note, I always tell my clients that if you're going to be off your regular schedule to let your listeners know, no JAG show next week, but I'll be back in two weeks on July 15th. So until then, stay healthy and stay safe. Later. If you like what you just heard, share the JAG show with someone else who's interested in podcasts. You can also follow the JAG show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For help creating or improving your podcast, visit jagindetroit.com.